uh, for me to not tag you in future, then um, just let me know, and uh, and I won't do. I don't I don't do it often, but I feel that this um, this message and what I'm going to be sharing and, and why I'm sharing um, this message um, regarding seeking the kingdom of God first, I believe it's a crucial. Sorry, the Wi-Fi just dropped off um, a little bit then. So I, I really do believe this is a crucial thing for um, for everyone that is seeking to um, to live with more inner peace and to and to experience more and more of the love of God. I, I really do believe that this scripture, which I'm going to be talking about and just sharing a few of my experiences on, about seeking the kingdom of God first, is is so 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 important for us and. Um, I'm going to share how I look to do this on a on a daily basis because it's uh, it's not actually uh, something big or it's not something complicated or it's not something that takes a long time to um, to begin to do. So first of all, I'm sharing this video. I've been led to share this because this morning on a WhatsApp group that I'm in with uh, with a group of born again Christians, um, someone has um, someone who shares each day like a daily devotional. Uh, the daily devotional started with seek first God's kingdom and it's talking about Matthew 6 verses 31 to 33. On the yesterday I was speaking to someone who um, I've never spoken to before, someone who works in the digital industry that I work in and we spoke for about an hour and a half, it was a very deep, very meaningful conversation. We originally connected up thinking we'd speak about work and potentially um, doing say a podcast together um, from in terms of our work experiences but as it turned out as we were speaking together it became clear very quickly that this the person I was speaking to um, are going through um, their own spiritual awakening over this last 12 18 months in particular so our conversation hi Karen God bless you and your family so the, the conversation with this person moved it, it, it focused mainly on life, about life experiences, um, about spiritual awakening. And um, it was really interesting as I was speaking to this, um, it, it was a lady, as I was speaking to this lady, she was talking about how she's starting to realise and comprehend that her, her life is changing so much and she's moving away from working long term, that she has been doing in a global business, very well paid I'm sure, moving away from that, doing something for herself, doing something that's on her heart. Um, and she was saying to me, uh, she, she isn't a born again Christian and she, she kind of believes in like a higher power, but um, she's not yet in a relationship with Jesus. But she was saying that she's, you know, she's really realizing that it's, you know, it isn't about money. And she says, even if it means that I, I have to, um, you know, earn less money for a period of time, then it's not about that. I'm not, I'm not doing what I'm doing because of the money. I'm doing it because of what I feel is that I want to give back to other people and to share to other people. And it was such a beautiful thing to be hearing because this lady and what, what I shared with her, I said that I really do believe that you are stepping into um, God's will and God's plan for your life. You're aligning yourself with the will of God. You are moving away from, from focusing on, on money and money being the thing that you kind of look to and strive for and think that that is, you know, you're, you're working to, to earn money to then have a good lifestyle and to provide for people. And so in this conversation, because of what she was sharing, she was, she was effectively sharing life experiences which matched up with what's in Matthew 6, which is about seeking first um, God's kingdom. So that was yesterday on a conversation that was that I wasn't expecting to have. Um, we'd not spoken before. I shared this scripture, Matthew 6, and then this morning I wake up and I look on my phone and of all the scriptures in the Bible, um, what's been shared is in, in this group um, is uh, Matthew 6. So I feel this is such an important message. At this point, I want to just praise God for the life of Joseph Belibe, uh, for Patricia, his wife, and for their entire family, and for their, for their ministry. I only came connected up with um, Joseph, I think it was in late November or early December, through a sister in Christ, Ruth Davis, and just God bless everyone. And these are all kingdom connections. The way God moves and God works is just, it's just beautiful. When, when, we, when we're aligning our lives with the will of God, God brings people into our lives. He, he, he brings people to give us wisdom, to give us support. And in particular with 
how one of the ways in which our father used Joseph Believe It in my life, so we'd literally only been in a friendship for about three weeks in December, and it was at the end of December, um, just between Christmas and year, I was in a really, really challenging place because I was facing into one of the biggest decisions of my professional career over this last 20 years of is now the time for me to close my business after 16 years and forge a new path doing something maybe either different or just going out without the without my business without my business identity the rvd again and for that to just go away i didn't have any sales lined up i didn't have there was not there was nothing really for me to move into and so the path that the choice I had to make was do I either continue praying that God will provide and there'll be miracle sales breakthroughs and blessings for PRWD to try and rebalance the books and to try and just balance everything up because it had been certainly a challenging couple of years, I will definitely say that in within my business. I'd had to downsize it dramatically. So do I carry on just praying that God will provide and that there'll be sales breakthroughs and that I'll be able to balance or is now the time to close PRWD um, and literally step out in faith completely, trusting in God that he will provide, trusting in God that um, he will lead me and the doors will be open to be able to earn money in whichever way I was going to earn money to be able to pay my bills, um, to, to provide for my family. So this was, this was a place I was on and I was led to speak to Joseph um, I'd only known him three weeks and he could visibly see when I saw him in December, late December, that I was carrying a lot of weight. I was carrying a burden. I was carrying this not knowing what the right thing to do is. And so I was seeking my support from some people around me. And um, in this conversation with Joseph, he, he was led in the spirit to Matthew 6. But before that, actually, he was led to, and I'm just going to get it, I'm just going to show you because this was such a significant moment, period for me in my life. At the end of 2020, this conversation with Joseph, the scriptures he led me to, I made a note of them. I did what I rarely do. Um, I've got scriptures all around on photographs and things like that. But what I rarely do is take, um, take scripture, type it out and then print it out on a piece of paper. But I'm just going to show you what um, what Joseph led me to, what, what the Spirit led Joseph to share with me. So, so first of all, he took me to Matthew 11, 27, 30. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me. All you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And this was beautiful for me, particularly verse 8, because I was weary, I was burdened. I, I was burdened with the financial pressures of um, of the business, the financial commitments, the the cost, the the money, the the kind of debts that the business had, which um, there are, I'm sure, millions and millions of business owners that are currently sat with debts that um, they didn't have 12, 18 months ago. So I was weary, I was heavy burdened. So that really that really helped me to, um, and I was able to receive that word and to um, and to experience a little bit of peace. But then it's what Joseph took me to next. He took me to, and I'll probably get my camera again and go back on the wall because I chose to write, to, to print these scriptures out and put them on this wall in the kitchen, also on the bedroom door. Um, on the, so I see it before, um, you know, in the morning when I'm leaving the bedroom. And so he took me to Matthew 6. And um, so he asked me to read the scripture out. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to read, um, I'm just going to read the scripture out and I'm sure if, 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 you, if you're in faith already, if you, if you believe in the word of God, if, you, if you're born again, then you, you'll probably be familiar with some or all of this scripture. 
you may be watching this um, and not familiar with this scripture at all. Um, maybe you've, you've no faith right now and you're just wondering and intrigued as to what I'm sharing and what, what does this mean about seeking the kingdom of God first. So I'm just going to go to Matthew 6. So I'm just going to read this. I'm reading this from the um, NLT version and I'm going to read from verse 19. And then I'm going to bring it back to the conversation I had with Joseph in December and how Joseph was led to share this scripture with me. And then just just to conclude this video with what what change did this make in me and what change did it make in me in terms of my daily um, my daily walk, my daily experience with our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. So Matthew 6 from verse 19. I just pray the Holy Spirit is, is, upon, is upon you and you can hear these words, you can receive these words, that you believe in these words. So this was Jesus, um, Jesus speaking, Jesus teaching about money and possessions. Verse 19. Don't store up treasures here on earth where moths eat them and rust destroys them and where thieves break in and steal. Store your treasures in heaven where moths and rust cannot destroy, and thieves do not break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will also be. Your eye is like a lamp that provides light for your body. When your eye is healthy, your whole body is filled with light. But when your eye is unhealthy, your whole body is filled with darkness. And if the light you think you have is actually darkness, how deep that darkness is. Verse 24. And it's, this is specifically where Joseph led me into um, in December. Because of the, the crossroads I was at, either business. God bless you. God bless you, Karen. God bless you and your family. So again, I was at this crossroads. It was the business that had served me very well and provided um, financial blessings and without me realizing it before I came to faith, um, it, it provided us with money to, have, to live in a beautiful home, to have great cars, to, to, have, um, to have good financial um, stability over throughout most of, of that whole period, 15 years. And so now I was about, I was on the verge of closing the business but with nothing in the natural to, to move into. There was no clear path, there was no clear way of how am I actually going to earn money to, to pay for the bills. So from verse 24, no one can serve two masters, for you will hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear. Isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns for your heavenly father feeds them. And aren't you, yes, you, Aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing. Yet Solomon, in all his glory, was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for wildflowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. And this is to you watching this. Praise God, God for your life. Why do you have so little faith? So don't worry about these things, saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? 
These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. But your heavenly Father already knows all your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. Amen. I pray that you've received those words. Maybe you've heard those words for the first time or maybe you've heard them in a different way this time than, than ever before. So I'd heard some of those words before, but I'd not read through that scripture like I did with Joseph um, in late December 2020. And as, as I was reading those words, I was, I was believing in those words and I, I was having my faith strengthened I was having hope, I was, I was having a belief instilled in me that making this decision, this, this Holy Spirit-led decision through, through words shared, the Word of God shared by a brother in Christ that had only just come into my life three, four weeks earlier, this was God's will and God's plan for me to use Joseph Belieber to give me the confidence, the faith, the belief to make that decision. Now is the time to close the business and don't worry, I will provide for you. So that was December and then moved into January and I'm, I've, I've made that decision. I began the process to close the business and I've since over this last two, three months, um, as, as the business has closed, um, I've shared on a previous video that um, our father brought back into my life someone that I've known for about 10, 10 years ago that we worked with seven or eight years ago briefly. Um, we've come together, we've started a new consultancy. The new consultancy went from just literally a little idea to a brand and a live website within less than three days. And that was back in, back in March and it was an incredible experience that I shared. And that all came about, that, that new business was born on the seventh day of a seven day water fast I was doing. And it was a very profound experience for me to, to go without food for seven days, just but seeking God, praising God. And then for uh, on the last day of the seven day fast that I planned to do, become customer centric was born. And it is God's will, God's plan, and I just give him all the glory. In terms of my day-to-day -day life now, and what does it mean to seek the kingdom of God first, which is what this video is about. I'm going to just go and share, just read out what the devotional was this morning that I read on this WhatsApp group that has led me to do this video. Because yesterday I was sharing this scripture with a lady that I'd never spoken to in my life before. This morning I'm reading this the same scripture with, with a devotional, with a bit of story. So I'm just going to finish by reading this and then finally share what does it mean for me personally to seek the kingdom of God first in my life. And maybe you may already do this, you may have never done this. And I just pray in faith that these words that I'm sharing, these experiences, this scripture, that this is speaking to you, this is helping you because... You are a precious, precious child of God and Jesus loves you and he is the same yesterday, today and forever. And um, the time is now, the time is now to come into the truth and for the truth to set, to set the captives free. So this devotional this morning, um, seek first God's kingdom. So I'm just gonna read, read what I saw this morning. Matthew 6 verses 31 to 33. Therefore, do not worry, saying, what, will, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. As a child of God, know that it is your Father's pleasure to meet all your needs. Jesus himself tells us, for your heavenly father knows you need all these things. But God does not want you to seek 
after these things. He wants you to seek first his kingdom. And when you do that, all the things that you need will be added to you. So your first priority every day is to seek his kingdom. The word first in verse 33 is the Greek word proton, which means first in order of importance, holding the highest place in all our affections. God wants us to seek first his kingdom and all things will fall gloriously in place. We are not to seek after things the way Gentiles do. The word seek in the Gentiles seek, verse 32, is a Greek word epizetio. It means to seek with all their might, with, with much sweat or with much stress. However, the way God wants us to seek in seek first the kingdom of God is a Greek word zetio, which means to hunger, to desire, to worship. It is simply a hungering, a desiring for the kingdom of God without any labour or toil. But what is the kingdom of God? Romans 14, 17 tells us that it is righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. And the kingdom of God dwells within you because the Holy Spirit indwells you. So the kingdom of God is his righteousness, peace and joy in you. If you want to have peace and joy in the, whole, in the Holy Spirit flowing inside of you, then seek every day to be conscious of your righteousness in Christ. Not your own righteousness, but his righteousness given to you as a gift. Pursue Jesus first. Spend time with him and listen to his word. And when you do these things, you are seeking his kingdom and his righteousness and all the things that you need will be added to you so for me personally what does this mean when when i wake up in a morning before picking a phone up and seeing what notifications there might be and things like that what i aim to do is just go into prayer and I, and I usually just led in the spirit and I'm just, I just say, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for my life. Thank you for the lives of my children. Thank you for our blessings. Thank you for our health. Uh, it, I, just, uh, I move into just uh, thanks and gratitude for, for, for my family, for my friends, for, for everything that our Father is doing in my life and to see all the blessings and prayers being answered. But then what I say, which is about seeking the kingdom of God first, I say, I just say, Father, I am just your vessel. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And then I just say, I just ask the Holy Spirit to be upon me today, to just to lead me and guide me to do what you want me to do, Father, to lead me into the places you want me to go, to make the phone calls, to, to do whatever it is, to go wherever, wherever I'll end up going, whatever I end up doing for, it to, for me to be led by the Holy Spirit. And that is, for me, in a morning, how I seek, how I look to seek the kingdom of God first. Just, you know, today is your day, Father. I am just your vessel. It isn't, it isn't complicated, it isn't drawn out, it isn't, it isn't a long, um, in-depth piece of scripture to look to uh, remember. It's just, it's just with, with an open heart, desiring, to be led by the Holy Spirit. And I, I do this every day, and as you may have seen, if you've watched any of my other Facebook live videos at any point, so many beautiful things happen. Because seek the kingdom of God first, be filled with the Holy Spirit, so let, letting the Holy Spirit guide our decisions, our choices, uh, uh, what we do, when we go out, um, which places we go. And the most beautiful things happen. And when I say the most beautiful things, there is just, there is this increasing amount of what you would describe without faith as coincidences. If, if you look at some of my lives, you would, and you didn't have faith, 
you would just think that, oh, Paul is just living this kind of strange life where he's just experiencing these crazy coincidences every single day. And it's, oh, it's just a small world and these things could happen to everyone. <laughs> but, but they aren't, they're not coincidences. It is through me seeking the kingdom of God first, like genuinely pursuing Jesus and wanting to be led by the Holy Spirit. And then each day I just set out most days I don't know what I'm going to end up doing that day, but the most beautiful things happen. We go to new beaches, we go and get together with friends, we have barbecues, we meet people, we have conversations, we, we go on parks, we just just living life as, as a dad with three children and with friends and family members around me and living in a beautiful area of the country. We're just living life, but we're living life being led by the Holy Spirit. And it's just absolutely beautiful because then you really start to see and comprehend that the orchestration of life by our Father, you, you, you see how his hand is in everything and that he's scripting things and planning things. So even though to us, we don't know what's to come, although often I do a video uh, for the, a message for who I'm going to meet, but I don't know when I'm going to meet them, who it's going to be, what their life is at all, but God, has, God leads me into their life. But this is just about living life and it's just beautiful and glorious when we seek the kingdom of god first it is it is just it is life changing and if for someone that may end up watching this or could be watching this live who is watching this and looking and their thoughts are thinking well this all sounds like okay and interesting but but i'm not religious and I've never been religious. Well, please know that this is not about being religious. I'm not religious. It is not about following a religion. This is about a relationship with Jesus. It's about being set free, absolutely set free in the truth of who we are. That we are all created by the creator. We are all miracles of God. He formed us. He created us. He cares for us. He knows everything about us. He sent his only begotten son into the world, Jesus Christ, to live a sinless life and to, and to die on the cross so that we can be cleansed of every single sin that we have ever done. And we've, we've all sinned as, as, um, as, as adults watching this now. We, we've all sinned. And it's not about the going to church on a Sunday as this last 12 months has, has, has shown as the churches have been shut physic the physical churches have been shut there have been I can only imagine and all glory to God a huge increase in people around the world seeking our father praying to God being crushed being broken hearted hitting rock bottom and realizing that God is the rock at the bottom so this isn't about the church it isn't about it isn't about coming into this into a relationship with god but this is but then there's a connection with the, the the corruption in the church and all the bad things that have gone on within churches over over hundreds and probably the thousands of years it's not about that at all that all that those dark evil things that are in any way connected to the church are evil and they have no place at all when we are seeking the kingdom of God first and when we are being led by the Holy Spirit because when we've been led by the Holy Spirit when we're in relationship with Jesus we you would not hurt a child you would not be authoritarian over a child you wouldn't you wouldn't be forcing people to do anything you wouldn't be causing division you wouldn't be filling people with fear. You wouldn't be, you wouldn't be doing anything that causes harm to people. It's about love. This, when we seek the kingdom of God first, when we're coming into relationship with Jesus, when we're filled with the Holy Spirit, we are living with the fruits of the Spirit. And um, where is my, where is my fruit? Fruit of the Spirit. My fruit of the spirit is gone somewhere. Peace, joy, love, patience, forgiveness. <clears throat> so thank you for watching this video. Uh, I, I pray in faith that your faith has been strengthened or you've been, you've experienced 
them, and maybe for the first time in your life, some faith, some belief in, in God, the creator, our father, who created the heavens and the earth. And, and this is where our help comes from. I also just going to probably finish by saying that I have only been in relationship with Jesus in faith for less than two years. And I'm 43, be 44 later on this year. Does that mean that our father just abandoned me and didn't care about me and was waiting for me to come into relationship with his son Jesus in order for beautiful things to start happening in my life? You know, so was I just out on my own for 41 years? Not at all. God will never leave us nor forsake us. He formed us, he created us, he saw us before we were born and he has been with us and me and you, every single one of us throughout our entire life, whether we have been in faith or not, whether we have blasphemed him, whether, whether we have had no faith at all and whether, whether we have mocked Christians and ridiculed them and done lots of research and decided in, in our own minds that there is no God, that Jesus isn't real and it's just all made up. Wh wherever, whatever people have said or done, this is one of the most glorious, profound things about our Father, his forgiveness of us and what he did by sending his son Jesus Christ into the world. So it doesn't matter what we've done, said, or that he has always been with us. But until we come into relationship with Jesus until we're born again through the Holy Spirit, we are being led by our sinful nature, the desires of our sinful nature. And for many people, it can just be quite subtle of how our sinful nature affects our life and affects what we say or do and how it affects our relationships. But for some people, that sinful desire can take people into the most deepest, darkest places that someone could ever possibly go that leads to the most darkest things that one person can do to another and that is the sinful nature and that is before we set free in Christ so thank you for watching this God bless you and protect you and your entire family I just pray I pray for I pray for the an outpouring of his Holy Spirit in your life whether you're in faith or not, wherever you are in your life, I just pray that during 2021, your life is going to just become so incredibly beautiful. You're going to experience the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. You are going to, um, uh, thank you, Andy. Thank you for watching. Um, thank you, Andy. Yeah, um, that you are going to experience the agape love of God the agape love of God, the unfailing love of God, the, the love that is that, that we can't comprehend, love that when we start to experience it, the love that that brings inside of us for other people, for our family members, for our friends, for people that we've never met, the love that we have for people that are ridiculing us and mocking us and coming against us. And in my case, in this last 12 months, people that have reported me to the police the things that I've done or said that they in their own minds have been twisted and misconstrued. Just the love that the love that we have is when, when we're born again is just profound. We don't take offence, we uh, we forgive people and it is just the most beautiful life-changing reality and, and truth to come into and uh, Jesus is just waiting with open arms for every single one of us so Thank you for watching this. God bless you and protect you. Please share it if you feel that someone um, that's connected with you, someone that's in your life or someone that's on your Facebook may want to hear this message or, or maybe right now is the time that God has planned for them to hear this message, for them to have for the scales removed from, from their eyes. So thank you. Have a wonderful day. And um, I look forward to sharing more of my life experiences uh, living through the... Um, living through the Holy Spirit and by the Holy Spirit, which is just life-changing. Agape Paul.